What's going on guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. Today we're going to be reacting to why the metric system matters. I really don't know too much about the metric system. I wasn't ever taught the metric system in school. Well, I'm sure they probably touched on it briefly or something, but it was never taught in depth. You know, in America, we use the imperial system of measurements. And so when you're in America, you really just never come across the need to know metric system measurements. And it wasn't until I left America and traveled overseas to Asia that I really started noticing the metric system being used with kilograms and kilometers and things like that. But even so, it wasn't something I ever really needed to pay much attention to. You know, I, I wasn't driving over in Asia, so I never really needed to pay attention to the speed limit. And uh, I never really cared much about paying attention to the measurements of the stuff I was buying and things. So uh, it just wasn't something that really came up uh, when I was overseas. But I've been really curious about this topic for quite a while because I do understand that the majority of the world uses the metric system. Um, since I've been on this journey to learn about the UK and Ireland, I've learned that the UK actually uses kind of a mixture because I've learned that all they, they, although they do use the metric system there, they also use things like miles instead of kilometers. So um, I think that's really interesting how there's this mix uh, in the UK. But from what I understand, the imperial system that America uses was actually originally uh, a British system. It was the British imperial system of measurement, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so uh, it makes sense that they would probably use that uh, as well on occasion. So anyways, guys, I don't really know much about the measurement of uh, the uh, metric system, except for like, obviously, no, there's kilometers instead of miles and there's kilograms and grams and things like that instead of pounds and ounces and whatnot. Uh, but I really don't know where it came from, kind of the ins and outs of how the metric system works and, and things like that. I've heard that it's easier than the imperial system. Uh, but I really don't know much about it, like I said, so I thought this would be a really interesting video to dive in. And so let's just go ahead and check out why the metric system matters. What does the French Revolution have to do with the time NASA accidentally crashed a $200 million orbiter into the surface of Mars? Actually, everything. That crash happened due to an error in converting between two measurement systems. U.S. customary units, and their SI or metric equivalents. So what's the connection to the French Revolution? Let's explain. For the majority of recorded human history, units like the weight of a grain or the length of a hand weren't exact and varied from place to place. And different regions didn't just use varying measurements, they had completely different number systems as well. By the late Middle Ages, the Hindu-Arabic decimal system mostly replaced Roman numerals and fractions in Europe. But efforts by scholars like John Wilkins to promote standard decimal-based measures were less successful. With a quarter million different units in France alone, any widespread change would require massive disruption. And in 1789, that disruption came. The leaders of the French Revolution didn't just overthrow the monarchy. They sought to completely transform society according to the rational principles of the Enlightenment. When the new government took power, the Academy of Sciences convened to reform the system of measurements. Old standards based on arbitrary authority or local traditions were replaced with mathematical and natural relationships. For example, the meter, from the Greek word for measure, was defined as one ten millionth between the equator and North Pole. And Wait, what? Wait, are they, one meter was halfway between, or wait, hold on, what did he say? Hold on, hold on, hold on. With mathematical and natural relationships. For example, the meter, from the Greek word for measure, was defined as one ten millionth between the equator and North Pole. Oh, one ten millionth. And the millionth. new metric system was, in the words of the Marquis de Condorcet, for all people, for all time. Standardizing measurements had political advantages for the revolutionaries as well. Nobles could no longer manipulate local units to extract more rent from commoners. Well, can you imagine that if today we didn't have kind of standard units of measurement? Obviously, you know, in America using the imperial system and most of the world using the metric system, I guess we technically don't, but 
we know what a pound is and we know what a kilogram is and we know what a mile is and we know what a kilometer is. Can you imagine before these measurements were set how difficult it would be to you know, know the distance of, of places, know how much you owe someone and things like that. I can't even imagine living in a world that didn't have precise units of measurement, whether it's the, you know, whether it's the imperial system or the metric system. Uh, doesn't really matter in that regard, but uh, it matters that we know what those measurements are. And so I'm very thankful that uh, you know, they got together and did that a long time ago and uh, created these uh, you know, precise units of measurement the government could collect taxes more efficiently. And switching mm. to a new Republican calendar with 10-day weeks reduced church power by eliminating Wait, Sundays. 10-day weeks? Adoption of this new system wasn't easy. That's interesting. In fact, it was a bit of a mess. At first, I understood, I understand that uh, the months used to be, you know, 28 days. You know, our the word month used to come from moon. Uh, moon. So there's uh, there's 28 days in a moon cycle, 28 days in a tidal cycle, um, and uh, they, you know, it's 13 months in a year, and uh, obviously that's been gone for a while. But uh, I always wish w that we had the 13 months back, 28 days, you know, four weeks per month, even like I wish that was still the case, but obviously it's not. <laughs> First, people used new units alongside old ones, and the Republican calendar was eventually abandoned. When Napoleon Bonaparte took power, he allowed small businesses to use traditional measurements, redefined in metric terms. But the metric system remained standard for formal use, and it spread across the continent along with France's borders. While Napoleon's empire lasted eight years, its legacy endured far longer. Some European countries reverted to old measurements upon independence. Others realized the value of standardization in an age of international trade. After Portugal and the Netherlands switched to metric voluntarily, other nations followed, with colonial empires spreading the system around the world. Wow. As France's main rival, Britain had resisted revolutionary ideas and retained its traditional units. But over the next two centuries, the British Empire slowly transitioned, first approving the metric system as an optional alternative before gradually making it official. However, this switch came too late for 13 former colonies mm. that had already gained independence. The United States of America stuck with the English units of its colonial past, and today remains one of only three countries which haven't fully embraced the metric system. Liberia and Myanmar. Um, that's so interesting that we're one of only three countries that still use the old British system. You know, it's interesting that Britain uh, has taken, you know, has taken on the metric system and we still actually use their old system. That's just so interesting to me. Um, but what what am I thinking of? Don't doesn't. Doesn't the UK still use miles and things like that? So am I am I correct in the fact that they don't fully use the metric system in, in every case? Um, I don't know, because I, you know, I definitely know that they do use miles per hour instead of kilometers. At least, at least people I've seen talking about that in the comments and things like that. Um, and I do think they use kilograms over pounds, though, but obviously they have a weight system to measure that, like, you know, like you're Oh, wait, that's 14 stone uh, or, you know, whatever stone. So, all right, anyways, that's just uh, very interesting. Despite constant initiatives for metrication, many Americans consider units like feet and pounds more intuitive. Yeah. And ironically, yeah. some regard the once revolutionary metric system as a symbol of global conformity. Nevertheless, the metric system is almost universally used in science and medicine and it continues to evolve according to its original principles. For a long time, standard units were actually defined by carefully maintained physical prototypes. But thanks to improving technology and precision, these objects with limited access and unreliable longevity are now being replaced with standards based on universal constants, like the speed of light. Mm -hmm. Consistent measurements are such an integral part of our daily yeah, lives they really are. that it's hard to appreciate what a major accomplishment for humanity they've been. It really is. And just as it arose from a political revolution, the metric system remains crucial for the scientific revolutions to come. 
Yeah, I, uh, I obviously think that the metric system matters now because the entire world, except for three countries, is, uh, and, you know, America being one of those, is actually, that's what everything's based on. You know, from what I've heard, uh, one of the biggest reasons, or one of the biggest talking points against uh, going to the metric system in America is that everything would have to be converted. And it would be a huge task to do so at this point. You know, America is huge. And to actually change all our all our speed limit signs, all our, uh, well, just everything, every unit of measurement, if you can imagine, uh, down to our bolts, you know, the bolts and things that are, you know, in everything. It would just all have to be changed. And so I, I imagine it would be very difficult to do that. You know, this was an interesting video, but it didn't really go into detail about some of the, you know, some of the things I was hoping to see about the metric system. I wanted to go in a little bit more detail about why so many people say it's easier or better than the imperial system. This told me, kind of showed me why it mattered, but it didn't really show me why it, uh, you know, why it's so much better than the imperial system. I still don't obviously understand that. You know, growing up in America, only imperial system, it's just so intuitive to me. It's, it, I, I can't imagine going to the metric system and being like, oh man, that's, that's just way more intuitive. It, maybe, maybe it would be the case. And I'll have to watch another video uh, sometime soon on the metric system and like kind of, you know, why people like it more. Um, because I just, I mean, like a pound, you know, a mile, you know, a foot, a yard, all these things are so, so easy for me to understand now um, that it's, it seems like it would be very, uh, I don't know. I see it's just intuitive to me. I don't know what to say about it, but I'm sure a lot of people obviously that have been learned on the metric system would say the exact same thing about the metric system, uh, you know, instead of the imperial system. But anyways, guys, like I said, I'll try to find another video in the coming days um, on, you know, learning why people like the metric system so much, because I've seen it a ton in comments. People talk about, uh, you know, how how awful the imperial system is and whatnot and i'm like i obviously can't comprehend what they're saying because i don't really know the difference really to be honest i don't know why the metro system is supposedly so much better or so much easier so i'll try to find a video on that in the coming days but uh, anyways guys thank you so much for stopping by please click that like button feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others and don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys, peace.